we're asked to determine the derivative of the given function. Let's begin by simplifying the function by determining the sum of hyperbolic sine of x and hyperbolic cosine of x. We will do this by writing both functions in their exponential forms shown below, where hyperbolic sine of x is equal to the difference of e to the x and e to the negative x divided by two, and hyperbolic cosine of x is equal to the sum of e to the x and e to the negative x divided by two. So the sum is equal to the difference of e to the x and e to the negative x divided by two, plus the sum of e to the x and e to the negative x divided by two. Notice here we have a common denominator. Let's go ahead and factor out one half from both fractions, which gives us one half times e to the x minus e to the negative x plus e to the x plus e to the negative x. Looking inside the parentheses, notice negative e to the negative x plus e to the negative x simplifies to zero, and e to the x plus e to the x is equal to two e to the x. This simplifies to one half times two e to the x, which is equal to e to the x. So the original function can be written as f of x equals natural log, open parenthesis, natural log, and now the input into the inner natural log function is e to the x, close parenthesis, and then we have an exponent of two, close parenthesis. From here we need to be careful. The exponent of two is not attached to e to the x, it's actually the square of natural log e to the x. Looking at our notes below, if the exponent is outside the parentheses, it's actually the logarithm being raised to that power. If the exponent was inside the parentheses, as in this form, we could apply the power property of logarithms and write the logarithm as a product. But again, that's not the case here. We have the square of natural log e to the x. So we could write this as natural log of the square of natural log of e to the x. But to simplify this, let's go ahead and write out two factors of natural log e to the x. This is equal to natural log of natural log e to the x times natural log e to the x. And natural log e to the x simplifies perfectly to x because the logarithm is base e and the input into the logarithm is also base e, which is this property here shown below. Or if we want to, we could apply the power property of logarithms because now the exponent of x is attached to the e, not the logarithm. Natural log e to the x is equal to x times natural log e here as well as here. But natural log e is equal to one here and here, giving us x times x, which is equal to x squared. The original function simplifies to natural log x squared. So now the function is in a form where we could easily find the derivative by applying the chain rule or we could apply the power rule of logarithms again. Natural log x squared is equal to two natural log x, again because the two is inside the parentheses and attached to x. So natural log x squared is equal to two natural log x. In this form, we can find the derivative without applying the chain rule. F prime of x is equal to two times the derivative of natural log x, which is one over x and therefore f prime of x is equal to two divided by x. Let's verify graphically that this derivative is correct. Remember, the derivative function will give us a slope of the tangent line to the original function at any value of x in the domain of the original function. The original function is graphed in red and the purple line is a tangent line at a given value of x. To find the slope of the tangent line, I use the derivative function f prime of x equals two divided by x, which we can see here as two divided by a. I'm using a here, so we can use the slider for a to change the value of x and animate the tangent line. So notice how when x is equal to one or a is equal to one, we have the slope of the tangent line to the function where the slope is two, given by the derivative function value two divided by x. And as we change the value of x or the value of a, we can see the line remains tangent to the function at the given values of x. So this graph does verify we did find the derivative function correctly. I hope you found this helpful.